Hey, what's up guys? It's Chris Lee and you are now watching United Destiny Entertainment Tutorials Online. Hey, what's up guys? Chris Lee back with another United Destiny Entertainment Tutorial. Check this out. This is now part three of the video segment. Um, with this video segment, I'm going to basically show you guys how to apply some EQ, some compression, do some panning, different things like that. Now, uh, I think for the more focus for this video, I'm going to more show you guys the panning effect and stuff first and how to get your levels and vocals balanced before you start adding different uh, EQs and compressions and stuff like that. So if you didn't check out the videos before, make sure you go check them out. I basically showed you guys how to clean vocals up, uh, the type of effects that I add, added to the vocals through the waveform to make the vocals sound nice and clean and get them ready for the mixing process, okay? Um, so with this particular video, I'm going to just show you guys how I start to pan the vocals because a lot of you people ask me how do I get the... You know, the panning effect that I get on my vocals or the stereo image. Why do your your mixes or your songs sound so full? Well, I'm going to show you and I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Now, a lot of you like to record your vocal one time. Uh, that's okay if you know how to effectively make your vocal stand out inside of a mix with a, a big instrumental, such as the beat that I'm doing to right now. But for the hook, if you want your songs to sound bigger, mostly everything that's played is in stereo image so you either have one channel to the left and one channel to the right that's two channels that's stereo left and right so if you wanted to sound big and full inside of the mix you have to do that inside of the headphones you have to do that inside of your stereo image which means that for every vocal that i record i record two of them and the reason being is because i want one in the left ear and i want one in the right ear because i want my mixes to sound big and full inside of the stereo image mix okay um, so check this out. Let's play that hook. She a bad girl. She gon' make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. She a bad girl. Now, if you notice, uh, I'm clipping and peeking right now because the beat is really loud. It's banging a lot. So what, what you want to do is go ahead, which I already did, was I went in and I hit negative seven for the beat. And I'm just going to do negative eight to show you guys. You want to turn the beat down. It's never want to be a process to where you're turning the vocals up a lot. Now, I will say you have to make sure that you record your vocals inside of Adobe Audition properly, which means that before you hit Adobe Audition, your levels inside of your recording DAW coming from your interface needs to be loud enough. Now, you hear in the industry all the time that you want to hit somewhere around negative uh, 12 when you record, but I say do what works best for you. You want to hit somewhere between negative 12 and negative 3. And the reason being is because every microphone is different. Every compressor, uh, compressor is different. Every preamp is different. And they're going to give you different levels. So with that being said, the output of your microphone or your preamp going into the interface may not be loud enough. So I say the range goes from negative 12 to negative three um and the reason being is you it's called the signal to noise ratio you want to make sure that when you're recording you're picking up more of your vocals instead of the room tone of the the noise of the room because it's going to be louder in your recording so that means that you need to crank the volume or crank the preamp to where it's not clipping but where it's loud enough to where you can hear the majority of your vocal tone and your vocal frequencies over the frequencies or the tone of the room, okay? That's the signal-to-noise ratio. You have to make sure that your, uh, your signal, your audio signal, is louder than the, the noise of the room or more balanced. So in this case, if you ever have a situation to where your vocals are too low, one recommendation that I do recommend inside of the waveform is to go back to the waveform, and you're going to be marrying this effect. Go down to Effects. And then go down to normalize. Now, normalize is going to tell you to normalize to whatever percent you think is best. I personally, you can try 50% and just hit apply. And that'll cut it down, obviously. But if you, that's if your vocals are too loud. But if you want your vocals to get a little bit louder, you just have to do it in a sense to where it's not distorted. You do the same thing. You go to normalize and you want to process it to 100%. And what that's going to do is make your vocal louder. Now, you see the vocals louder. She a bad girl. She going to make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push. And notice that I'm not clipping here uh, or peeking because 
my vocals or the signal to noise ratio my signal recorded inside of Adobe Audition was at a good level to where if I needed to increase the vocals a little bit more, I will have enough headroom to where I'm not clipping. You want to make sure that you do the same thing. Now, if you have the, that issue to where it's a little too loud when you normalize it, just negative 2.0 or negative 4 or whatever works for you and just cut it down. Now, in my particular case, I don't need to do that, but that's just a little tip that I wanted to give you guys because it'll help. Now, when it comes to the hook, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and mute the singing vocals because I want to get this thing panned out in the stereo image. So what you want to do is take those vocals and then you want to go to the mixer window. The mixer window, I already know that all my yellow tracks, um, and I'll just change this here so I know what it is. Hook one. All my yellow tracks are my actual hook. Okay. Hook two. So in order to get this thing panned, if you just put your cursor over the stereo balance area to tell you stereo balance, which means two channels left and right. So you can either pan all the way to the left or pan it all the way to the right. In this situation to where I want to create balance, I'm going to click the first vocal and I'm going to hit negative 50. The reason why I'm going to uh, hit negative 50 is because I want to put that vocal mainly in the left channel or the left uh, stereo so image so I can actually hear it in the left side. Now to create balance, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the right. So instead of putting negative, I'm going to put positive or just 50. That way I have one vocal in the left, one vocal in the right. Let's check it out. She a bad girl. She going to make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. She a bad girl. Now if you notice it. She a bad girl, she gon' make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it, I'm about to push up on it. Okay, I like the way that sounds. Now, what you wanna do when you record, if you same thing works with R&B. If you're recording R&B vocals and you're recording the entire hook, the way I do my hooks is I pan things out at different uh, ranges in the frequency uh, spectrum. So if I recorded these two vocals, so you record one vocal, the same vocal twice, all right? Pan it left and right. Then when you record the next octave or the next harmony, I'm going to go ahead and take the next vocal, which is my singing vocals. She a bad girl. She going to make the nigga want it. Because this is going to help me make the vocals more full. So in a situation, I'm going to do the same exact thing, except I'm not going to use 50. I'm going to use something a little bit wider than 50. So I'm going to take that particular vocal and I'm going to go negative uh, 75. Okay, and then I'm going to take the next one after that, and I'm going to do positive 75 and just put 75. Now, this is going to make those particular vocals wider, giving it more of a bigger sound inside of the stereo image. Okay, so, so check it out. She a bad girl. She going to make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. She a bad girl. Now, you may not have noticed it, but once you pan those vocals out, it helps with the clipping and the vocals being too loud because you're spacing everything out. They're not sharing the same frequency range, which means you're giving the vocals some space. Now, to avoid the clipping even more, what you want to do is for your, okay, for my high, my singing vocals, I just want to go in for the volume this time and cut those down because you want to create that that sonically interesting um, uh, blend of vocals. So I'm going to go in for the volume of that first one to hit negative six and the reason why is because i don't want these background harmonies the same volume as my main vocals you want to turn it down okay she a bad girl she gonna make a nigga want it look look how much um it, it was hitting in the red at first and i'll show you guys so i'll make this zero and i'll make this zero again look how much is going into the red she a bad girl she gonna make a nigga want it let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. She okay, you see how much is going into the red now? Once I turn this down to negative six and turn this down to negative six just to show you a visual difference. She a bad girl. She going to make a nigga want it. <laughs> if you notice, this stand mainly into the yellow now. A little jumping into the red, but that's okay because we're balancing this thing out. But this is going to help you with the volume, leaving you more headroom when you decide to start 
adding EQ, compression, and all that other stuff. Now, the reason why I want you guys to do this before you start applying EQ, compression, and all that other stuff is because you want to get a good mix without effects first, a good balance. That way, once you start to add different EQs, compressions, and different effects, everything will still sound balanced, but just bigger, cleaner, and better. She a bad girl. She gon' make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. She a bad girl. She a bad girl. Now, not that I have to go to negative one, but I want to just because I want a little more headroom. She a bad girl. She gon' make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. She a now. That's how you want to go ahead. <clears throat> that's how you want to go ahead and balance your vocals. Now, if you have more harmonies or, and stuff to add to that, then you want to do the same thing. Take those, pan them either to negative uh, 40 or negative 80 or negative 100. It all depends on your ear and what you're going for and pan them out. That's how you create a nice stereo image and adjust the levels, okay? Same concept. Same concept here. All right, so now say, let's say we jumped over to, let's say we jumped over to the verse. All right, same thing. For the particular verse, you want to make sure that your ad libs or your stacks are balanced. So right now, everything is going to be super loud. She a boss baby, she a bad bitch. Bad bitch. Green eyes, shawty mad thick. Mad she thick. said she want a nigga mad rich. She got a mean curve Ooh. like a bad bitch. Ooh. All right, so you see I'm clipping and, and doing all that type of stuff. So what you want to do is do the same thing. I got the main verse here, which is one take. Some people like to do two. I've seen ridiculous uh, studio engineers like to have the artist record the vocal four or five times. That's not necessary to get a big sound. If you record the vocal level properly and add some nice plugins and make sure that your instrumental isn't too loud, then you shouldn't have to stack the vocals that many times. It will make it sound fatter, but there are plugins and things that you can do uh, to get that fat full effect so you don't need to record the same verse five six times to make it sound big or full okay um, so in this particular case what I want to do is go in and uh, I'll kind of want to do the same thing stereo pan and I want to take this thing and go negative 40 because this is the verse now and do the other one positive 40 because I don't want it too wide now I already know that I'm gonna have to cut it down so I'm just gonna mute my ad lib and the stacks I'm just gonna go ahead and turn them down to let's just go with negative six right now to be on the safe side that's gonna be my starting number yours may be different just use your ear baby she a bad bitch green eyes shawty just use your ears for it, all right? Check it she out. She a boss, baby. She a bad bitch. Green eyes, shawty mad thick. She says she want a nigga mad rich. She got a mean. Now, as much as as much as much I'm liking that right now, I can already tell that I want to go uh, a little bit wider than that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to left 50 and put this one to right 50, all right? And then I'm going to turn that volume down just a little bit more. So I'm going to go to negative 8 just because I don't want it to be that loud, all right? a bad bitch green eyes shawty mad thick she said she want a nigga mad rich she got a mean curve like a bad bitch now with your ad libs you don't want them to be as loud so i'm gonna go to negative 10 you want them to complement the verse not necessarily overpower it unless that's what you're going for but nine times out of ten that's not the case oh, baby she a bad bitch green eyes shawty mad thick she said she want a nigga mad rich she got a mean curve like a bad bitch now, as you can see, the, the vocals are balanced. Uh, the clipping distortion air, uh, you know, issue that I had, it's not there no more. And the, and the vocals, the ad libs and the actual stacks are starting to sit in the mix and it's starting to balance and blend with the verse. She a boss, baby. She a bad bitch. Bad bitch. Green eyes, shawty mad thick. Mad she said she want a nigga mad rich. She got a mean curve like a bad bitch. Look, girl, you looking so good on that. Good. Uh, you gonna make a nigga get hood on it Let's go. now for my ad lib i just turned it down negative uh 7.5 but i want it i don't want it to share the same uh space as my actual lead vocal so i'm gonna go ahead and pan it just a little bit so let's go with uh let's go with negative 20 she a bad bitch green eyes shawty mad thick she said she want a nigga mad rich she got a mean curve like a bad bitch 
Look, girl, you looking so good on it. Uh, you going to make a nigga get hood on it. Let's go. Okay. So like I said earlier, um, that's something that you want to focus on. You want to try to get a good balance with the beat before you start to apply EQ, compression, reverb, and all that other stuff. Now, it's really personal preference. I'm not going to tell you a right or wrong way. I'm going to tell you to do whatever gets the job done. If it sounds good, it's good. But be realistic with yourself. Uh, are you doing, you know, are you taking 10 steps to get something accomplished when it can only take two steps. Regardless, if that's how you work, that's how you work. But when it comes to clients and making money, you want to make sure that you get these projects in and out the door. Make your clients happy. They like fast turnarounds. They'll start paying you more money. They'll come around a lot more when you have fast turnarounds. But if it's taking you two, three weeks to mix the basic song, then nine times out of 10, you're not going to make a lot of money in this industry. So that's just something that you want to focus on. But go ahead and stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to show you guys how I start applying those EQs and those compressions uh, to make the vocals more uh, present in the mix. And then I'll create another video with doing delays and reverbs and some crazy fun effects. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. Go check out all the videos before this and continue to keep watching.